the life of one of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who was born blind. And his mother had kept him away because he was blind. So she became known as Umm Maktoum, although that was not her name. Her name was Atikah binti Abdullah. And this Sahabi, his name was Abdullah. So as time passed, he became known as Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiyallahu an. He was a great man. He was related to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through his wife, Khadija binti Khawailid radiyallahu anha. He was actually the first cousin of Khadija binti Khawailid radiyallahu anha. So Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum being a blind man, it did not deter him from accepting Islam in the early stages when he heard about Islam. And he was a person who was very, very convinced that what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had brought was a gift of Allah for Quraysh, for mankind at large, and for all creation. He used to go often to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and ask him, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, read for me some of the revelation that has come to you. So it is reported that Quraysh harmed him a lot and they had persecuted him so much just like they persecuted the others from amongst the believers. And one day, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with some of the elders of Quraysh who were non-Muslim. Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, who's the father of Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu an. Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, he was one of the leaders of Quraysh. He was speaking to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so was Umayyah ibn Khalaf and Abu Jahl and a few others. And they were extremely uh, delighted to be speaking to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they did not want to accept, but they wanted to argue and debate. So what happened is something strange. As they are talking to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiallahu anhu, who was already a believer, had come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was blind, remember. And he says, Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, read for me some of what Allah has revealed to you. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at him and turned away back to speak to those who were the leaders of Quraysh, hoping that perhaps I'm about to answer some of their questions. If I do, maybe they might accept the message because he wanted desperately for them to accept this message of Islam. So as Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiallahu anhu finished his statement and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam turned away from him, a little while later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the opening verses of Surah Abbas. And if we look at the meanings of Surah Abbas wa Tawalla, we will find that it is connected to what happened with Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiallahu anhu. So the verses were revealed. Abbas wa Tawalla Powerful verses saying Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam frowned and turned away because the blind man had come to him. And how do you know perhaps he would have been purified? Or had he been reminded or if the reminder was given, he would have been from those who benefited from the reminder. And as for the one who believes he was independent, referring here to Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira and the others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you gave them importance yet, had they not accepted the message, it was not going to harm you. It was them who were going to be harmed and so on. Then Allah says, this is indeed a lesson for those who want to take heed. It is a reminder for those who want to be reminded. So why did these verses come down? It's a question. Number one, we believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was perfect. He was the best of creation, the highest of all prophets. He did not need correction. He did not make blunders or errors. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
who allowed this to happen in order for us to draw a lesson that no matter how perfect you may think you are, if you want to follow the example of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you must know how to accept correction and admonition. This is clear and this is the belief of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and to grant us ease. So never ever think for a moment that this was dropping the level of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, it wasn't. But it was an admonition or a reminder to him to say, don't turn away because he's a blind man. This blind man is far better than the others who have come to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This shows us that the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are far higher than the others and they were to be given importance and this is the reason why we say radiyallahu an when we say the name of any one of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to give Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum a lot of importance after that and he says you are the one whom Allah has admonished me regarding amazing and this was a blind man and he was a relative of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so when we hear the opening verses of Abasa wa Tawalla we should know that they were connected to this blind sahabi May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and upon all of us. It is reported that he was after Mus'ab ibn Umayr, the next person to make hijrah to Medina Munawwara. And some have said that the two of them were together in Medina Munawwara. He was from amongst the first who had made hijrah. And he used to recite the Quran also for the people of Medina Munawwara. They used to ask him about revelation. He was a mu'addin of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam together with Bilal ibn Rabah. Please remember this. He was a blind man, Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiyallahu anh. He was also a mu'addin just like Bilal ibn Rabah radiyallahu anh was a mu'addin. So one used to call the adhan, the other used to call the iqama. One used to call the iqama and the other used to do the adhan. They used to rotate. And in Ramadan, it is known that Bilal ibn Rabah's Adhan radiallahu an used to wake the people up for suhoor at the earliest time of the Hajjud. And when Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum used to call the Adhan of Fajr, that is when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, now you stop eating, subhanallah. So he was the one who used to call out the Adhan, which would instruct the Muslimin that the time of Fajr has come, come in. And this was Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum, well-known hadith, well-known muaddin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as, as, even though he was blind, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made him a person who had to, who was in charge of Medina Munawwara. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out with most of his companions at the time of the victory of Mecca to Mecca. So who was in charge of Medina when they went out for Fath Mecca or the victory of Mecca? It was Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiallahu anhu, even though he was blind. And he was a man whom, when the verses of jihad had come down, he was very sad. So sad that he felt that, you know what, I cannot participate in the struggle against those who usurped my wealth as well, because I am blind. You see, those who had taken our wealth and they took our property and so on, the struggle had commenced against them and verses were revealed. La yastawil qa'iduna min al mu'minin wal mujahiduna fi sabilillah. Verses were revealed saying those who sit back and those who engage in the struggle are not equal. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum saying that, you know, I pray that Allah grants me an excuse. So when the verses were written by Zayd ibn Thabit, as he was writing the verses, an exception was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was that exception? The words, besides those with the valid excuse that was revealed. So if you read the verse today, it says, they are not equal, those who remain behind and those who engage in the struggle, except those who have a valid excuse. Who was one of those who was meant by this verse? Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum radiallahu anhu because he was blind. But at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu called for the people to get up and rise and go to Qadisiyah, he was one of those who was in the forefront. He made sure they took him all the way to Qadisiyah to fight the Persians. And Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu was the head of that army. And amazingly, Abdullah ibn Ummi Maktoum, although he was blind, he told them, give me the flag of the Muslimin. I will hold it and ensure that it is held high. So he held the flag on the day of Qadisiyah. 
and he passed away in the same battle because they killed him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a lesson from the life of this great companion who passed away in the 14th year of Hijrah at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He was a great man and there were some verses of the Quran which connect us with this great Sahabi and it is good news to those who cannot see also to say that if such a man had achieved such high levels and ranks, then surely a person who has not had eyesight or who has lost his or her eyesight, that, is, should, that should not be a deterrent from earning closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from succeeding both in this world and the next.